DJI. It's a company I've spent a lot of time talking about here. Now, love them or hate them, they own a vast majority of the drone market, but because of the quality of their products, they usually cost a lot of money. So when I found out that the DJI Mavic 3 Classic had just come out, which is the same as the Mavic 3 sans some of the extra features, I knew I had to get my hands on one immediately. So without any further ado, for the first time in two years, let's roll the intro. The Mavic 3 originally came out in late 2021, and when I first saw the pictures from that beautiful Hasselblad camera, I instantly knew I wanted to buy one. But when I saw the costs in comparison to the Mavic Mini I was using at the time, I thought maybe I can hold off on buying a drone for the foreseeable future. Fast forward to about a year later though, and I got sent the trailer for this drone right here the DJI Mavic 3 Classic. Now, obviously it does have some shortcomings in comparison to the full fat Mavic 3, but we'll talk about those later. For now, let's have a look at what we get out the box. Right out the box, aside from the drone of course, we get two spare propellers, a remote control, I personally opted for the one with the built-in screen, more on that later, a USB-C charger brick for the drone, and a USB-C charger cable for the controller. It does obviously come with an owner's manual, and is really well packaged with a piece of foam keeping the camera straight so it doesn't damage the gimbal, and everything does come in a little plastic bag, which while good for protection does seem just a little bit wasteful. You might be thinking, this drone doesn't come with a whole lot. And well, you'd be right. But while the Apple style lack of accessories is slightly infuriating, the fact that the Mavic 3, which is the more expensive one, doesn't come with any fancy accessories either, kind of takes a little bit of the pain away. But if you're a serious filmmaker and you're going to be using this drone a lot, I would definitely recommend you invest in the Fly More kit. Even though it's an extra couple hundred pounds, the minimalistic pouch that the drone comes with doesn't really protect it at all, except for the gimbal when it's in transport. Anyway, enough talking about the add-ons. I think we should spend a little bit of time talking about the specs of this beautiful new machine. Now with this drone being pretty similar to the standard Mavic 3, the specs don't differ that much, but here's the rundown if you're not familiar. In aviation terms, this thing has a maximum speed of 21 meters a second or 19 meters a second if you're located within the EU, a maximum takeoff altitude of 6,000 meters and a maximum flight time of 46 minutes. Now chances are you're not buying this drone for its flying ability. It is a very important feature, but it's a given on any DJI drone. Realistically, if you're buying this thing, you're interested in the camera quality. So let's talk a little bit about that now. DJI's acquisition of the vast majority of Hasselblad has given birth to this spectacular camera housing a four-thirds sensor which can shoot up to 5.1K video at 50 frames a second, which quite frankly is mental. It's got an aperture of between f2.8 and f11 and a maximum field of view of 84 degrees. Like most of DJI's prosumer lineup, the drone has the ability to shoot in D-Log, their native log format, and also a standard picture profile which can be used in cases where heavy color grading and full control aren't required. In each of these, the camera has an ISO of between 100 and 6400 for normal color and 400 to 600 for D-Log and HLG. The DJI RC finally features a built-in super bright display, which means I can fly this drone around to my heart's content without worrying that my phone's gonna die or someone's gonna call me halfway through filming and I'm gonna lose the live feed from the thing. The new controller design is pretty far from the folding design I'm used to on other Mavic drones, but I'm pretty sure I'll get used to it with practice. I can definitely say though that this is way more comfortable to use than the older folding remotes, featuring two really well-placed custom buttons on the back and removable joysticks which are stashed on a perfect location on the back as well. I think it's also worth mentioning that the live feed from this thing is absolutely spectacular. You can see every last bit of detail coming from that drone, which is just amazing. So we've talked a lot about what this drone's packing. How does it compare to the standard Mavic 3? The answer, it doesn't have a telephoto lens. Now, this is a really cool feature that I know a lot of people are gonna benefit from, but from where I'm standing, it doesn't really make a difference. Bottom line is, when I'm shooting something with a drone, I usually want an aerial wide shot. And of course, it's good to have the option of the telephoto lens, but to be honest, I don't think 400 pounds cuts it for me with something that I'm never gonna use. So, specs are out the way, let's get to the meat and chew of this video. How this drone performs at its main job, filming and taking photos of stuff. So to do that, we've come out to central London with the camera crew so that we can just fly the drone around and see how it performs. So, up, up and away, I guess.
the verdict on this piece of aerial gear? Well, in a word, I'd probably say value. While it's definitely not a cheap piece of kit by any stretch of the imagination, I can definitely say it produces an astounding image for the cost that it's at. And if you're willing to look past some features such as the telephoto lens, I can definitely say that this is one of the best camera drones on the market right now, and something that will hopefully be my aerial camera for a very long time.